This video is brought to you by Videoblocks. Hey guys, I've been sick for a few days now, but I'm finally back at the office and I'm ready to work on our new vi- Jordy? Lorenzo? Is that you? Hey Lorenzo, man, I missed you. Hey, Lorenzo, we have to shoot a new video for Copycat. Jordy, cut the hair! <laughs> Whoa, so many hate messages. Jordy, I really think it's time to cut your hair. Oh, oh, Lorenzo, I don't care what the people say. I'm not cutting my hair. They can jingle my bells. Hey folks, Jordy here for Cinecam.net and welcome to Copycat Friday, the series where we get inspired by a music video or film and recreate one effect from it. Eminem recently came out with his new music video, Fall, in which you can see many great effects, and one of them are these notifications, which are popping up everywhere. So let's jump into the copycat mobile and receive some hate comments. But before we do that, let's first take a moment to thank Videoblocks, our channel sponsor. Their library holds a growing collection of stock footage, video effects, after effects templates, and a ton more. We've also been adding stuff to their library, such as these muzzle flashes, sparks, and our studio backgrounds. With a single price per year, you can download unlimited video assets, which makes it incredibly valuable. For more information, make sure to click the first link in the description below. So Lorenzo is back, he's filming right now, and we've got Kim to help us out in this wonderful evening. So let's jump into the copycat mobile and film some stuff. Let me get it, let me put it down. One time for anybody out there following their dreams. Anybody in the city working two jobs so they can get two bigger better things. You can't see that I was at a put in. Every day and I go to every trickle by go to every Lorenzo, your trunk is way too small. Well, if you would afford me a bigger pay raise, I could afford a bigger trunk. <laughs> So we just tried our first shot, let's now see upstairs if it works. And it works. That is a good thing. Now we are sure that we don't have to come back tomorrow because that is also not possible because today is Thursday, tomorrow is Friday, so that means we don't have a second chance, we don't have a second evening. I'm gonna stop yapping now and let's continue. We gonna make it, we gonna make it, I kept my soul no matter how hard that they try to take it, we gonna make it, it's a wrap guys, we got all the shots that we need, so let's go inside right now and go into After Effects. While you're making your shots, it's very important to look for structure. Although we are shooting on an evening, I'm paying attention that we shoot under a street light. We're making sure that the headlights from the car create a deep enough contrast on the street. Let's start with that message pop-up. Create a new composition. Next, go into the rounded rectangle tool and simply draw a message bubble shape. You can make this pretty big and take up the entire composition. This will create a new shape layer, and if you open up its properties, you'll find under the rectangle path that there's an option to change the roundness of the corners if you want to do that. We're going to give some more depth to the bubble, so I'm going to add the four color gradient effect to it. For starters, I'm going to position the color points from this effect to have each point sit on a side. Then go into the color options and change the upper color to light blue. The points on the side can have somehow the same colors. I am picking this one manually each time so that there's still a little bit of a difference between them to make it seem more random. And then the bottom color becomes white and this will give some more depth to that shape. Then go ahead and add some text in here. Usually the name of the app sits on top, the message itself is bigger and sits below the title, and in the corner right you'll get the time of the notification which is now. On Google, you can find the app icon, like the YouTube logo. Simply import that into After Effects as well and position it next to the title name. And that's the only thing there is to it. Now let's create a whole new composition for our actual shot. In order to make the message bubble float in the air like it's part of the scene, we're going to have to find out the exact movements that my camera did while I was filming. Every little shake, the smallest bump, every tilt and every pan has to be figured out. And guess what? We were filming outside of a riding vehicle. So this is going to be a ton of work for After Effects. For us, it's just a simple matter of going up to the menu, select Window, choose Tracker, and click on Track Camera. Yeah, that's it! You just let After Effects work and you can go get a coffee. And as you return, After Effects did its work. If you go into the Effects Controls, you will find out that the 3D Camera Tracker effect has been applied to it. If you click on it, it will show all of its tracking points. We can use any of those points to tell where our message bubble has to open up. For example, here on the street, 
right click on that point and choose Create Null and Camera. What we've just done is created a virtual camera that represents the movement of our actual physical camera. The null object doesn't do anything, but we're just going to use it to mark the position of the point that we've just chosen. We can now go ahead and insert the composition of the message bubble that we've created prior into the new composition. From your later options, make sure to enable 3D. You can then go ahead and open up the properties of the null object, select Transform and hit Ctrl C or Command C for the Mac users to copy all of those values. With the message bubble selected, hit Ctrl V or Command V to paste those attributes. It also changed its opacity to zero, so hit T to bring that up and change it back to 100. But that message bubble now sits perfectly in place on the point that we've selected prior, and this gives you a reference. You can now go ahead and start moving that bubble to a different place or rotate it to your desire. The message pops open, so what I'm gonna do is dive into the scale property. Change it to zero, enable animation, move forward in time, and increase it back to the size that you want it to be. Make sure that the animation is short and that you enable the motion blur. You can do so by first enabling it through this button from your layer properties, and then enabling it globally through this button in the composition. The message bubble should look like a glass panel, so behind it there should be some blurriness. To do that, we're going to duplicate our normal shot. You can do so by hitting Ctrl or Command D. On this duplication, you can already apply the Gaussian Blur effect and increase it to around 20 or 30. The whole shot is blurred, so we're going to have to say to only have this blurriness behind the message box. To do that, also duplicate the message box and add a fill effect to the one on the bottom. Change the color from the fill effect to white. When I disable the top message box now, you will see that we end up with a white mask. And that represents the exact size and all of its animations from the original. So the only thing that we have to do now is move the blurred shot underneath that white mask. Then change the track matte from the layer options to alpha. And you can now enable the top layer back and decrease its opacity to around 50%. For the final touch, you could also add a glow effect to the bubble to make it give light, and you could also add a noise effect to it to make it seem more like a display. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you, Videoblogs, for the support again. And like always, stay creative. I am exhausted. I've been working all day for 12 hours, and I work with children, so I'm really tired. And now Jordi need me to help him also. I am such a good girlfriend. Oh. I also work with children. Hey. <laughs>